So this is one of my bucket list items All right. that I've always wanted to do. So it's my very first time doing open mic and I've never done comedy before. They say laughter is good like a medicine. <laughs> so I hope to dispense some medication. Yeah. Right. So does anybody have any church pet peeves? Yes. One of my church pet peeves is when the pastor says to pay your tithes. Don't get me wrong, not against tithes, but the Bible says give your tithe or bring your tithe. And when I hear pay your tithe, it makes me feel like I'm buying something. <laughs> Like if I don't pay my tithes on time, I'm going to get my blessings shut off. <laughs> <laughs> or if I don't like the blessing that I get, I can get a refund. <laughs> and if I pay my tithes, surely there's a coupon, like a doorbuster coupon. If I pay my tithes before midnight, I get 50% off. But hurry, supplies are limited. Now if you pay your tithes, you think there's a frequent tither program, so if I tithe 10,000 times, I get to enter the church ahead of everybody else on a red carpet. And maybe I even can get an upgrade where I get to sit up on the platform with the visiting bishop in that velvet high back chair, and you got the little table between so you can rest your communion there. It's not any ordinary communion, it's a 1957 Bordeaux in a gold-plated bejeweled goblet. Not the little plastic cup with the foil wrapping you can't pull off in grape juice. And my communion is a uh, freshly baked, gluten-free loaf, as opposed to that stale styrofoam, tasteless <laughs> circle. Now, I wonder what the Freeman Tither program looks like at the Catholic Church, because they already got the wine and the goblet thing down. So maybe, like Southwest, Bibles fly free. <laughs> And when the ushers pass out your communion in the frequent tither program, they wear these white gloves. It makes me think that they're planning to commit a crime later and they don't want to leave behind any fingerprints. Now, you know y'all have seen some pretty gangster ushers, right? <laughs> now, try to take a seat other than the one that they're ushering to you to and see if they don't get gangster on you too. Now, the visiting bishop is one of those Simon Says preachers, you know, the kind that says, somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> now, turn to your neighbor and say, praise the Lord. <laughs> find three people and give them a high five. Put your hands in the air and wave them like you just don't care. I didn't say Simon Says. <laughs> now, the visiting bishop preaches from Psalm 150. Praise the Lord in the sanctuary. Praise the Lord with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. And when he finishes, he's like, you know, I just, I preach real good. And I'm feeling the anointing coming down real heavy. And I hear the Lord saying, since I preached from Psalm 150, that y'all need to give $150 and bring it on this altar. Now, I don't want y'all to miss out on your blessing. So dig deep and bring the $150 to the altar. Get in line. So a couple people get in line. And I assume they're probably preachers themselves because they got on purple suits and matching purple shoes. <laughs> the official pastor, preacher outfit. But the visiting bishop feels that not everybody is in line, and they should be. He doesn't want them to miss out on their blessing. So he says, okay, if you don't have $150, find somebody else, and each of you bring $75, and both of you get on in line. I see you nodding. Lisa was there with me when this happened. These aren't jokes, y'all. This is true. <laughs> People start looking at their friend they came with like, I got, you got $75, I got $75. We're going to get our blessing today. And they get in the two for $75 line together. So the visiting bishop's still not satisfied. There's still not enough people bringing their money to the altar. So he says, OK, say you don't have $75. Find two other people. Each of you bring $50 each. That's three times 50, $150. And some of y'all may not have $50, but if you look in last Sunday's bulletin, you're going to find that doorbuster 50% on coupon, but you gotta come and hurry up and tie it before I finish. So some people still don't have uh, the $50. They don't have the coupon. And you're thinking, with that coupon, I, I could get 50% off. It's only gonna cost me $25. But all I got is two 20s. I don't have change. I need to buy lunch next week. So I need to buy into this anointing. 
what, how many people do I need with $20 each? But you can't do the math in your head. And you remember you got a free app on your smartphone, so you reach into your $500 handbag and pull out your $700 iPhone and pull out the free app and you calculate 150 divided by 20. That's 7.5. Now, where are you going to find 7.5 people? Is that seven adults and one toddler? <laughs> what toddler? Do you have $20 on you? <laughs> and even if she has $20, that toddler <laughs> is probably all in pennies and coins. <laughs> so you turn into an auctioneer. You say, I got 20. got 20 over here. 20 gets you. 7.5, 20, 20. 20 over there, 20 over there. Sold to the man in the purple suit and the purple shoes. So praise the Lord. We got everybody out of their seats bringing their money to the altar. We got the $150 line. We got the two for $75 line. We got the three for 50. We got the 50% off Bedside Baptist doorbuster coupon. And we got the 7.5 for $20 line. Praise the Lord. He's made a way out of no way. There's even a person in line with an envelope praying that nobody notices that it's empty. <laughs> so after all of that, the visioning bishop done got everybody in line. He done taught them. <laughs> after all of that, he's got everybody in line, but he forgot to give the invitation for the people to give their lives to Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. God have mercy. He done taught them they can pay their tithes, they can buy their blessing, but he forgot to tell them they could have Jesus Christ for free. That's one of my pet peeves. God bless you. Good job, Pumpkin. Good job.